Hey, welcome to Wood Air Metal Podcast, though this week we're not going to have your typical podcast. Um, Adam can't join us this week. So I thought, well, why don't I show you something instead? I thought I'd talk about something, I guess it's sort of a lesson. Uh, something I wish I knew, and I think we're going to do a whole series of these, things we wish we knew early on in the in the making, or playing guitar. So here's one that, man, it took me forever. I think at least 10 or 15 years playing before actually I figured it out. And ironically, I don't think, I'm not actually sure if any of my teachers up to that point knew either. I think it's, it's a bit of a mystery um, in the guitar world for some reason. But what I'm gonna talk about is the wrist movement of your hand when you're picking. Um, and the way that I figured it out, you know, kind of try to do this in a good way. I'm just winging it right now, so just bear with me. Um, I tried all kinds of things, you know, like I, I wanted to play fast when I first started playing, the, and I suppose I still play fast. But uh, I was trying to figure out which kind of angle or how would you hold your wrist and all that stuff, and I tried to figure things out, and it never felt right. There was all these these little like gaps, like. Maybe I could do something really, really fast with one sort of picking style, but then it didn't work at all slow, and then it didn't work. Um, the slow thing that was was so stiff that like past a certain speed, it really like didn't work very well. And coming to find out, it had a lot to do with how I was moving my wrist. So um, Tuck Andrus, if you if you're not familiar, fantastic guitar player, unbelievable guitar player from the group um, Tuck and Patty. Make sure you check them out. Seen them a few times. Tuck does all this crazy, um, um, there's all kinds of textures and stuff in everything he plays. You can hear all these little, he'll have like the, the drums going and the guitar and the bass and everything going at the same time. Kind of like Ben Lacey or something. It's kind of the precursor to that. So it's kind of interesting. You never really see Tuck play with a pick. But he wrote this article once upon a time, and I don't even know where it is. It used to be on the internet. And I remember reading it a few times, and it, it was really like big words were used that made it really comp confusing for me. But he talked about all these different pe picking techniques and, and really about the wrist movement and stuff. And he kind of extrapolated that George Benson had really come up with the best method um, for picking and I never really understood it and remember these this is kind of like early days internet too so it's not like you could go on YouTube and go watch a bunch of George Benson videos so if you hadn't seen him which I at the time I hadn't seen him um, in any video I don't think um, I, I didn't really know what his picking technique looked like and then I think I eventually kind of saw what it was and if you haven't seen it um, bear with me for a second um, George has a kind of a, a different sort of style he picks. It's, it kind of looks like this a little bit. Um, and I'm probably doing it a little bit wrong because I don't quite do the full Benson picking technique thing um, for a couple reasons. And the, none of it has to do with... There are probably none good reasons because his picking technique, if you haven't seen him play, is, is incredible. Um, and a lot of people think that the only thing that's special about the way George Benson picks is the angle which he picks, and they they, they kind of miss the point of why it's better. Um, so let's talk for a second. So Tuck used all these big words, and I, I wish I could find the article. I, I guess I haven't really looked. Maybe if I looked, I'll find it. But uh, he uh, talks about how you can move your wrist. So if we take our wrist and we look at it, right, there's a couple ways we can move it. We can move it back and forth like this. We can move it like you're waving. You can turn your wrist. Um, you can also pick from your elbow. So what you see a lot of times is people, when they're picking, right, there's this, um, one of the ways people tend to think about doing it is this sort of like waving motion. You know, you're kind of doing this sort of thing. Um, and it's an okay, it's okay for some things, but you find out, and Tuck kind of talks about this too, is it, it really hits a limit of speed. Um, you just can't move your hand that fast in this direction. Um, it, 
the muscles or whatever, they're just not maybe made for that. I don't know. And it's not very controlled. Like after a certain speed, you just can't really control it very much. So then you might try this kind of approach where you're, where you're sort of like turning a doorknob. I think that's how he explains it too. And you can, you can kind of do that here too. I'm going to try to... And there's kind of good ways um, that you can sort of do that. And you can kind of get a speed thing there, but it doesn't translate very well. It's such a big muscle to move for like um, intricate playing in a way. So on a single string, you can kind of get that working pretty well, or at least in my experience. And then there's also elbow picking, which you see, um, which is when you're moving your whole arm, right? So, <clears throat> and that has a lot of power and it works really well. You know, when you're, when you're doing different kind of strummy sort of things, but it doesn't seem to translate very well to um, intricate picking and just having control over where the notes are. So what, what you come to find is it's more of the motion of like knocking on a door, right? I'm not knocking on your head. Uh, so your, your knocking is really the motion. So, um, and what you find is when you're writing too, like I'm left-handed, but writing, we use this muscle a lot, right? It's, it's this kind of motion. Um, <laughs> that kind of thing is actually the motion that we have the most control of. You have tons of experience, especially if you're left-handed and you play left-handed and you're right-handed and you play right-handed, you have all this dexterity that you've been working up over the last however long you've been alive with, with drawing and writing and stuff. And I know we're getting away from that sort of thing. But uh, now what Benson does is when he's picking like this, if you look closely, it's, it's very much that motion. Um, it's very much that motion, right? Um, and then what's interesting is I think a lot of people stumble on this um, without anyone ever showing them that. They just kind of feel it. Because even when you look at this, um, when you saw me doing that, it probably looked like I was going side to side. So it's kind of hard to tell when you watch a video if somebody's doing it the one way or the other it kind of looks like from here it looks like I'm going side to side but I'm actually it's more of a motion like this and if you I don't know if there's any way to get the camera to really see it but it's 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 much more like this kind of motion kind of an up and down and I kind of turn my hand just a little bit to make it work. Um, it doesn't, it, it actually works um, with standard picking or a lot of times I find the tone is actually better for me at least um, when I flip the pick. So instead of your standard pick like this, the, the sort of more Benson-y style or you see Pat Metheny and Sean Lane and people like that doing it, you know, all, all master pickers. <laughs> You, you see them having this thing too. So what it, what it really is, is this, this motion. And what I noticed too is it's just, it's so relaxed, even at like, like really fast speeds. It's such a relaxed motion. Um, where before I used I, I can't even remember quite how I was doing it, but it was more of like an arm pick sort of thing, and uh, arm like when I was trying to play fast, but it didn't have any control over it. Where here, if you kind of look close, you can kind of see I'm I'm doing I'm doing this motion, not this motion, and not this motion. I mean it all it all kind of like once. Once you move one thing, right, something moves. So there's a reaction from my arm that 
looks like a certain way, but it, it's really, again, it's like this knocking, knocking on the door motion. So. So it's very, very much this notion. I, I can kind of dig into this more a little bit, but you can find that it's it just it's even slow so it it just it feels so like relaxed it's just very relaxed all the time even, no matter how fast you play However many of those things go, it, it really just, just feels easy. And it should feel easy. So if you're finding it like you're picking and it's just this really tight feeling thing, like that's not really that's not really the game. Um, it should never feel tight. And that's that's with this hand too, actually. Um, maybe one little other thing that I've noticed just on the picking thing since we're there. Um, Holding the pick really loose, when you do that, it's an okay thing to, to do, but the uh, the sound gets lost in the pick because a lot of the energy gets lost in the picks. But when you, when you hold the pick tight, the energy gets sent into the string as opposed to being shared with the pick. When you do this, it, when I make the pick loose, it's not such a great sound. It's a sound you could use, but when I even when I play quiet and I hold the pick really tight, all the the energy gets transferred to the string. You get a much more um, full sounding thing. And the same same with picking on or on the the, the frets, having kind of like a loose feel, you know, makes the notes do that. So you want to push hard too. So if you're kind of holding the pick firm and pushing the, the string down firmly, the sound improves quite a bit, I think. And just because you hold the pick firm doesn't mean you can't make all kinds of different sounds, because, you know, where you pick changes the, the tone of the guitar a bit, right? So you want to you still want to master all those things and not be stuck in one spot necessarily which kind of everybody kind of finds their home base i guess the reason i don't do this is i do like to use a lot of palm muting and things like that and, and i will use hybrid picking so i that's kind of why i'm switching back and forth most of the time typically though like when i pick standard and i forget to sort of switch it back i'm always like oh the sound doesn't sound quite as good to me anyway i think that's it i think we'll we'll call it there um, let me know what you think. I, I'll be curious about your little journey on this. It's going to take a little bit of time if you've never tried this. It's going to feel extremely weird at first. You might try flipping the pick because it's just a little bit easier conceptually. So um, to think about doing it this way where you kind of turn your wrist. Um, if you look, my wrist is down like this and it's more of this motion. But eventually you can kind of figure out how to feel it. Um, <laughs> Um, in, in more of a standard place, if that's where you want it. Um, saying that, I mean, gosh, George Benson and all these guys, Pat Metheny and everybody, they have great tone and they always make great sounding things. So it's probably worth looking at that. And you'll see a lot of jazz guitar players too. They have a floating hand. And I'm assuming that this would still work um, fine there too. I, Adam Rogers does this too. You see Adam Rogers with his... He plays much more up here than I do. And he's got this very round, big, awesome sound. Um, not telling you you have to change the way you hold your pick, even though I think sound-wise, there's a lot of reasons why this can sound good. Perhaps if the guitar is up more like this and you're kind of hitting it at the same angle, like see, we're not hitting the string flat, generally. It's more of an angle. And part there's a lot of reasons for that. We'll get into that another time. But uh, that... Um, gets that fuller sound so anyway i hope this was helpful and we'll join you next week 
and we'll maybe we'll talk about some more and and look forward to some more of these uh kind of wish things i wish i knew when i first started videos and uh we'll, we'll keep throwing those out there too in no particular order appreciate the time uh like subscribe all that stuff it really helps give us motivation to keep doing these if you haven't checked it out our facebook page we're just like we've loaded like months worth of guitar memes and created a bunch too and um so stick that stick to that if you need a little bit of guitar humor every day we'll see you next time